Hi guys, welcome to this video series about good programming practices. In this video today, I'm going to talk to you about TIA function blocks, more specifically about when to use function blocks in your user program and how to properly code your function blocks in the user program. So let's get started. So first off, when do we use function blocks in our user program? Well, there's two main reasons to use function blocks in your user program. The first reason is to create structure and clarity in your program. And the second reason is to put some kind of reusability into your program. So let's look at the first reason. The first reason is to create structure, clarity into your user program. I'll try to demonstrate that by using my sample project here. I've made this sample project called Pump Systems. Um, in this pump system, I have some cooling equipment, I have some pumps, I have some valves, and I would like to create some kind of structure into this uh, program. I mean, there are different ways to do that, but I have chosen to um, group all the cooling equipment together, group all the pumps together, and group all the valve control together. So how have I done this? Well, I have created a function block for each of these groups, a function block all cooling, which has all the cooling equipment, a function block all pumps, which has all the pump control, and a function block all valves, which has all the, uh, the valve code into it. These function blocks are then called in my main program cycle, my OB1. You can see here I have a call for the pumps, a call for the valves and a call for the cooling. So by structuring my program like this, I have created some kind of clarity into the user program. A second reason for using function blocks in your user program is when you want to reuse a block of code different places in your program. For example, uh, let's say my system here has five pumps. Let's go and look into this uh, pump group. I have five sections, as you can see, one pump in each section. Well, what I don't want to do is for each time I have a pump, write code again from scratch. What I would prefer to do is write one block of code and reuse that block of code for each pump. So that's what I've done here. I have created a function block called control pump. And in this function block, I have all the necessary code to control one pump. So I have, for example, a, a circuit breaker input, a local isolator input, a switch to turn the pump on or off. I'll have an output which starts the pump. And then I have two structures uh, connected to this function block, a main control and a pump configuration. So this function block that I've created, I have copied as many times as I have pumps, so five times. And the only thing different from uh, each function block call are the inputs, the outputs, and the structures which are connected to the function block. So now we've talked about the two reasons to use function blocks in your user program. The first reason is to create some structure. The second reason is to create blocks of code that can be reused in your user program. Okay, so now let's have a closer look at a function block itself. So let's take this function block control pump, for example. First, let's start by having a quick look at the function block. So the function block consists of the function itself and the instance that is called with it. Next to that, we have the interface, which are the inputs, the outputs, and the inputs outputs. I mean, I normally um, make a good habit of calling all my inputs I underscore, all my outputs Q underscore, and my inouts IQ underscore. Um, furthermore, when my input is a Boolean, I put an X. When it's an integer, I put an I. When it's a structure, I put ST. So that explains uh, why I've used these, why these names are written like, like this here. Okay, so let's have a look inside the function block now.
So here we have the interface again of the function block, the inputs, the outputs, and the in-out area. And then we have the static memory and the temporary memory. Well, a first thing I would like to mention here is that right here inside your function block, you should never use any memory that is not local. So you should not use any global memory um, designations inside your function block. As you can see, everything I've used here for conditions are either from the interface or from the local memory. Um, an example of bad programming practice would be if you would insert a global parameter here, for example, global main control pumps release. So this is basically the same, uh, the same parameter as I've used here from the interface, but this is using it directly uh, from the global database. So this is not good programming practices. So if you want to make a function block reusable, the best practice is to only use local memory, static memory, temporary memory, and the interface parameters. Do not use any global memory input or output tags directly into the function block because this way it loses its reusability. Okay, let's delete this bad parameter, bad example. Okay, let, okay let's delete this parameter again. So another example of using local memory instead of global memory is here for example i have a timer an on delay timer um, and what i've done here if you go down you can see here's my timer um, a timer an iec timer is basically a small function block so what i've done is i've used a multi-instance which is basically an instance inside of an instance um, to define the memory area for this timer so here you can see the FB on delay pump on, that is the, the memory area that I've used here and that is defined here in the local memory. Again, bad programming practice would be to use a global memory for this, for example, um, on delay pump on. There you go. So what I've done now is I've basically created a global DB, DB6, which is used inside a function block. And this is not good programming practices. So guys, leave these global values out of your function block um, and your function block will be much more streamlined, will be much more reusable. Another thing I would like to talk about is the use of large structures in your interface. So whenever you have large, large structures in your interface, like for example here, I have a user-defined type main control and a user-defined type pump configuration. Um, even though these structures are only used as inputs inside my function block, I have declared them as in-out. So what's the reason for this? Well, if you, if you would declare these structures as inputs, with each function block call, they would be copied from the interface into the, the processor's data memory. That means you would lose resources due to this copying process. This um, type of process is called call by value. If on the other hand, you call them using the in-out structures, then it's called call by reference and you only reference these structures inside your function block. You don't actually the, pr the program itself doesn't internally do any copying to data memory. So you will save resources by using big structures as in-out parameters and not as inputs or as outputs. And this is true for <clears throat> user-defined types. This is true for uh, arrays and for strings. So that's all for this video about TIA function blocks. Thank you guys for watching. And please subscribe to my channel if you want to see more content like this in the future.
Furthermore, if you have any comments, good or bad, any suggestions, please leave them below the video. Thanks again guys and hopefully see you next time on the next video. Bye.